Hey everyone, how are you? Karagat Warner here and welcome to another edition of Power Pearls Unplugged. Today is going to be a very interesting uh, day, <laughs> video I should say, because I have a special guest and I will flip my screen in, in just a few moments so you can see who, who that is. But um, you guys probably already know because I've been talking it up like crazy on Facebook. Um, but I have um, designer Beth Whiteside here because we're going to be doing a little Q&A kind of session uh, for the, I'm calling it now a design along, but design along slash knit along for Creative Knitting Magazine because this one is a little bit different than what we've been doing in the past because now you get to customize and you get to do some different things on your own. You know, it's not just about here's the pattern and make it, although you can certainly do that too. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. So I can see you guys coming into the room now. So this is awesome. And uh, so I'll just jump in and, and introduce myself uh, again. I always like to do that a couple times because it takes a little bit for everyone to start coming into the room, so to speak. So again, my name is Kara Gott Warner and I'm the host of Power Pearls podcast. And uh, today we're going to do a little Q&A uh, for the knit along that's been going on over at Creative Knitting. And what do I do here on Power Pearls uh, Unplugged? So every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I usually jump on here and ask you guys a bunch of questions, uh, you know, kind of a mixed bag of things because I, I share what's going on uh, with the podcast, who's on, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll share that at the end during the wrap up when we say goodbye to Beth because she's going to have to do some preparations for the knit along. I'm like looking over my shoulder or actually not really over my shoulder, but over the camera at Beth because she's actually on Skype and some of you guys know I, I've done this before with Tabitha Hedrick. It's really a lot of fun um, and I'm always geeking out on ways to get the camera just right so we can have a, good, a great convo. So before I introduce Beth I just want to quick say to you uh, hey everybody and share where you are viewing from and I see already I see Tammy, I see Marie, Elisa, and you guys are diehard. You guys are always here every single week. So thank you for joining me live. Uh, I, there's Diane. Good to see you, Diane. You guys are awesome. You guys are always here, and I love how we have this really fun engagement. So now I'm going to flip, flip it around real quick so you guys can say hello to Beth. And then we're going to start the Q&A. And, you, and this is going to be like a, almost like a little pod. This is like a podcast podcast episode. So this is going to go on. Um, I'm not really sure. Hang on, Beth. Beth is waiting. I keep saying I'm going to introduce Beth and then I don't, but it's going to end up on, you know, Patreon, on the, on iTunes. I don't know, but it's going to be a podcast episode. So that's pretty cool. All right. So, um, here I go. Flip it around. Hey, there's Beth. How are you? How are you? Hi, Kara. Hi, everybody. So Beth, are you viewing from your computer or can you see the screen? You see my little Elizabeth Zimmerman cup? I didn't, I didn't really set it up that way, but it's got that quote. Can you see it? Knit no, on I'm with actually a little uh, afraid of technology clash. If I view you, you know, will I then cause the microphone? Because we've had that kind of morning, haven't we? Right? It's, yeah, I know it's, it's crazy. A little wacky, right? So, so I'm I'm not watching the room. Hi, well, room. I'll yeah, see you later. Exactly. Well, Beth, um, Marie says hi, Beth, and other other people flooding in say hello as well. So this is great. So yeah, you guys can see see my mug. I'll, I'll just hold it up. So it's a, it's a famous Elizabeth Zimmerman uh, quote. It says, knit on with confidence and hope through all crises. Oh, she was marvelous. So, uh, that's awesome. So yeah, I didn't. And then on the coaster, I have Beth. Do you remember this? Um, oh, the mosaic. Yeah, I have to. Sh I'm like, which camera am I on? I have to show. So, so this uh, was, Beth, this was from your mosaic uh, you know, section, uh, pro projects that you did for creative knitting one year. And I just turned a bunch into coasters. I mean, you know, that's like a no brainer. It's easy when you're swatching. So that's what I did. So, uh, all right. So we're going to, I'm going to flip it around and then we're just going to start a convo. All right. Back to you. Awesome. All right, you guys. So are you guys ready for this Q and a? So I'm hoping that, uh, those of you that are here in the room, you have been uh, participating in this exciting knit along. It's happening. I'm just going to do a little quick recap in case anyone is, is jumping on now and has no idea what's going on. We've been doing a two week long knit along 
on Creative Knitting Magazine and it's for the spring issue of Creative Knitting Magazine and of course that's the one thing I didn't bring up. I'm going to I'm going to grab it. Uh, oh wait, let me flip it around. Beth, you have it? <laughs> Mine is in my bin. Okay, and this is good. You know why? Because you guys, if you can see can you guys see that? It's a little bit dark. Um maybe hold it back, Beth, further away. Yeah, it's still kind of dark. Oh, there you can see. Okay, you guys get the idea. Thank you, Beth. Lovely. Or or, uh... <laughs> or, or and yes, and See the see the uh, the blue the blue poncho specifically that is what's part of this knit along slash I'm calling as I said design along I like how Beth got up because that's good it's like we've got some interaction and dynamic movement that is lovely and that's awesome um, so yeah so let me flip it back. so yeah that's what we're going to be talking about at uh, that piece. Uh, and and uh, or that's what we've been we've been knit alonging is that is that a word? Not really. I just made it up, but I think it is a word now. Um, sure. We've been doing this for last week, last Friday. We started 1 p.m. and then today we're going to start at 1 p.m. If I can stop talking, uh, and so but but the idea is we can customize. We can we can make the pattern as is in the magazine. So if you guys haven't gotten the pattern, you can go to creativeknittingmagazine.com and it is the featured pattern and then when you get to the, uh, you see the link, you can go and download that. Instant download or you can go ahead and get the magazine too. So if you guys have the magazine, you've got options. Uh, but today, you know, we're going to kind of, you know, talk about cu kind of customization because um, last uh, Friday on Power Pearls Unplugged, I talked about that. I mentioned, uh, I talked about li making little insertions is that what I, is that the right word for these? So insertions that you could you could you know place between the stitch patterns, right? So you guys recognize this if you guys are doing the knit along. This is the Madeira lace. It's backwards, the Madeira lace, uh, and that's my one of my swatches. And I kind of played around um, with some of these little uh, insertions, and this was the one that I showed you guys last week. And it took things a step further. I have uh, a swatch of this kind of inaction in coming to life and also a, a, a copy. So copy of a copy of a copy. I loved, I love copy machines cause like, oh my gosh. Um, and the magical things that you can do with a copy machine. I mean, I think that's going to have to be an entirely separate video. So, so, so far you guys, what, you know, Week one, what did you like? What you know? What did you what did you think of things so far? Do you guys have any questions? So now that I'm asking, if you have any questions, drop them into the comments while we just kind of keep talking. And then you know, Beth, how should we start? We were going to just kind of do a little recap and have like a little commentary about this. So sure. as we're waiting for questions to come in, so we don't have any dead silence in the room. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I like. Um... I guess last week I didn't get a chance to really see what, what you had told them about. Um, and so I, I've gone back now and, and seen that, that uh, little Facebook Live video that you made. That, that, by the way, those are always there for you guys to go back. You know, if you get a little bit further down the road, you, you've made, you make this thing. I mean, this may be your Christmas present that you make for everybody because you can play around with, with small things and small changes. And you can take some of those insertions that Kara has, has got there and actually try them out yourself. Um, let me think here. Sorry, I'm making no, sure cool. that my computer stops dinging as we're talking. Um, yeah, we were going to recap a little bit, and maybe one of the things that I really liked that you did, it was interesting that we both sort of did the same thing. I had my, my Skype, my <laughs> sorry, my Illustrator printout of the little schematic with the different ways that you can make a center <clears throat> panel or have, and have two smaller panels mm -hmm. on the side, yeah, uh, and the way you had drawn yours, I mean, our, our sample pattern in the magazine is seventy stitches wide because that's mm -hmm. what gives you about sixteen inches. Um, and you had one that wound mm -hmm. up being when you did the math on the stitch patterns that you wanted to use with the insertion that you wanted to use, um, wound up being about fifty stitches. So it could be a little bit smaller mm -hmm. and more of a little bit of a cowl rather than a shoulder hugger. Yes. Uh, yeah, and and that. You know, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Here I'm cutting you off. But yeah, and that was the example that I showed last week was 51 stitches, and the swatch that I ended up making because I was playing around with some of these insertions, and there was one that I liked better 
that only had eight stitches. So the example that I'm going to show uh, is 48 stitches, and, and and it'll lay it out a little bit more in a more elementary way. But I'm going to jump in a comment from Marie. So Marie is a com a question, I should say. So Marie says, "Is it okay if I replace the yarn? I cannot find it over here." Now speaking of the yarn, yeah, she's in Mexico City. Okay. So uh, to answer that, yes, and I want to show you guys. So the yarn that we used uh, for this poncho is Universal Deluxe Worsted Superwash. I always forget the full name. I have to look at it for some reason. I don't know why. I love this yarn. I use it quite a bit. And it's from Universal. Yeah, you, Beth has the new label because they have a new label. Um, oh, purchase new label. Yeah. And um, so, by the way, Universal Yarn is sponsoring the Knit Along. And... And so uh, this yarn is it's what the we've been working with and I have some a different color some different colors of the of the yarn and so does Beth but to answer your question Marie yes absolutely so what's the content so this is obviously a worsted weight so that you're lucky Marie because of course it's easy to to substitute pretty much and I would say probably in Mexico City as well um, so it's, you know, obviously it's a, it's a wool. It's a, I'm trying to see what the content is. It, is it a hundred percent? It's a hundred percent wool. So, um, and you know, the, it's eight. So the, on the label, it's 18 stitches by 24 rows equals four inches in stockinette. Now, you know, that's a good guide, but you know, that's for a size eight. Let me see. Does it say size seven needle? And for this project, we're using a size nine. So really the bottom line is you, you get close to, you, you look at the yarn, you get a good worsted weight that you like, it's a wool or it's got a good percentage of wool, right? And then you start swatching. So let's say you can't, you, 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 the gauge in the pattern, if you're going to make the, the pattern as is, and you're getting that gauge in a size eight needle, then a size eight needle is cool. Then that's what you go with. So I hope that answers your question. And um, so Elisa says, still waiting for the yarn to be delivered. Oh no. Um, Beth, Beth has a question. Let me flip it around. I have a, a comment because it, the other thing to, to think about, to touch on what Marie said, is this is just a simple rectangle that you're making. And uh, we were just talking about the difference between 50 stitches and 70 stitches. But, you know, if it's not exactly, I'm, I'm gesturing with my needle uh, here. So, you know, if it's not exactly 16 inches, it doesn't really matter. Um, when we get along to the, to the knit along uh, over on the Creative Knitting Magazine page, I'm going to show you how to put it together and seam it. But if it's not perfect, it's not going to matter. I mean, it's not like you're making a garment where fit is, is seriously uh, something you need to take into account. Here it's a rectangle. If it's plus or minus an inch, it's really not going to make a huge difference. So get a nice mm -hmm. yarn, uh, which is not to say you shouldn't swatch. Uh, we swatch. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just get to try out a stitch pattern when you swatch. You get to see if you really like it. Um, you can play yeah. around a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, you'll learn a lot from playing around. Oh yeah, you guys, you you guys know this. I mean, we when we do this, we've been doing the stitchication. That's all I I dream about it. All January long, you know, we've been doing that workshop, and you know, we'll be doing that a lot more. And you guys all know that I'm a big fan of swatching. And sometimes it might seem very elementary and maybe a little bit simple, but when you once you learn to love the act of of swatching, that's when new ideas come and new you know new findings come. So like I put out a question or a poll to you guys that are on Patreon. If you guys are my Patreon supporters, you know, and I think I put it out there to everyone actually as a public post because this the videos were free. You know, the extras were part of the membership, but if you're a member, you know, you guys. You guys had a lot to say, which I really appreciate. And half of you said, you know, you wish it was more challenging. That's interesting. And because I know that we've got, a, I've got a broad, you know, there's a broad group of you guys as a skill level. But the bottom line is swatching is a simple act of knitting. But it's within that simple act of knitting that you make huge discoveries. Wouldn't you say so, Beth? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I learn something um, every time I make a swatch. Um, and uh, as you'll see, well, if you were on last week, and what you'll see later is I keep all those swatches, and I have them in various forms. You know, for a while there, I just shoved them in a tub and, and pulled them out. And, um, you know, you tag them. We, we tag them because um, if you liked working with that yarn and 
you like mm. that stitch pattern, you never know when you might want to make something similar again, and you can pull that swatch out and see, oh, what needle did I use, or something about the stitch pattern, or, or you put it in a notebook, and then you have it there for reference, and you learn so much by making a swatch of something. Mm. Um, and playing with the possibilities. Oh, you know, I, you can you can think when you're swatching, and you you're making it one needle size, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I hope this is the one. I hope this is the one. I hope this is the one. And it and it just doesn't work out. Instead of you know getting upset about it, think, okay, well, I'm my hands are learning something about about working, and I'm learning. Uh, if you're a newer knitter, you'll start to learn whether you're a loose or tight knitter. Uh, so things like that come mm -hmm. about from playing and swatching. Hmm. And so I want to ask you guys, since you know we've been talking about customization quite a bit, and I know that some of you have decided that you wanted to make the pattern as is, which is of course, you know, you've got those two options. Uh, so I would like to know, uh, and I guess you could put a, a put this in the in the comments, you know, put a number one if you're making it as is, and a number two if you're customizing. Because that would be that would be something really good for us to know right now, and I know we have a lot more people coming over, you know, onto the creative knitting page later to watch, you know, at one o'clock, and uh, so yeah, we just have to watch our time. So Beth is yeah. busy getting ready. So um, yeah, um, yes, Beth. So the other thing I'd love to, to to see for myself, you know, knowing right now while you're putting your one or your number two, it sounds wrong in the, in the little. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh. There. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, you know, if, if you're over there on the, on the Facebook page with me, on the Creative Knitting page, I would really love to see your swatch photos. Mm. And, you know, there's a little option in the comments there where you can take a photo and, and upload it right into the comments section. And, you know, then if you're running into something, you know, maybe I'll notice uh, and we can talk about it. To have, a, to have something, a, well, a picture's worth a thousand words, right? So that would be lovely to see as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just yeah, thing. no, that's yeah. great. So, so far we got two, number one, so as is, because it's a lovely design. So, you know, what we could, you know, talk about a little bit here is, oh yeah, Beth, sure, go, go for it. Color, what colors Col are you making? Oh yeah, yeah, okay, this is great. So let's talk all about that stuff, you know, kind of like as is, uh, since that's something that we're, we're all interested in, in jumping in that way. So color-wise, have you guys, yeah, what, which color have you used? I know Marie's still waiting for her yarn, but Tammy, Tammy, what, talk about yours so far. Have you, um, have you, are you working in the blue color that the piece is featured in, or did you, did you pick a whole different color like I did? I have this, this grayish kind of color. I'm trying to remember what the name of this color is. But uh, I don't see it on. They have such wonderful names. Three, too. I know. Well, this one has a number. It's three four four three. <laughs> Elisa is waiting for gold spice, and Marie Marie still hasn't gotten hers. So here's here's my yarn. And 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 again, like when when Beth when Beth and I were chatting, we thought, well, what what are we going to talk about? Yeah, two crazy ladies that 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 love to go down <laughs> rabbit holes, and we're designers. Okay, that there you go. Right, so um, we you know we create the patterns you guys for these these beautiful patterns that you guys want to make, but we love to customize. So when I was talking with Beth the other day, and she's like, "Well, how far did you get?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, this is how far." But there's a reason why, and I'm going to show it to you guys. And then of course, this is my swatch of the poncho. That it's an as-is swatch, although I'm only doing two of the stitch patterns instead of all three. I just felt like doing a, a smaller version. Um, so that's on another ball of yarn. That's what's so nice about having multiple balls. So you can kind of play. And then when you're ready to dig in, I mean, you can just, you know, get an extra ball for that reason or just rip out your stitches, which, you know, you shouldn't be afraid to do that. But um, so I'm going to talk about the, what I was going to, what, what, you know, this whole customization thing and, and what Beth and I, um, you know, the things that we really love to do when it comes to uh, experimenting with stitch patterns and, and swatching, because I think we both are pretty obsessed when it comes to that stuff. You know, I would say that you're a swatch lover, right, right, Beth? Oh, my gosh. You'll see, <laughs> you'll see uh, later. I've got a, I'm going to show everybody. You, know, that you saw some of them. If you uh, follow me on my Facebook page, 
uh, Beth Whiteside Design or on Instagram or something like that, you'll see some of the swatches I've, I've posted up there. Uh, and there'll be and there'll be more coming. I, I, this is going to become a mm -hmm. blog post uh, for you guys to reference later as well mm -hmm. uh, over on my website. So there'll be more there and some downloadable content for you to play around with. You can print out your own little template uh, graph because you know I've made the graph now. You might as well use it. Um, so yeah, there's there's swatching is so much fun and and some of the stuff you can do and when you have all your swatches there. I'm casting on now. That's how far I've gotten for the one that I want to make for myself. Um, so that's where I'm at with that because I got so excited also uh, with the swatching and then the, the, you know, you play in the, it's not a shell game, but you're doing this with it and seeing how that will look. Um, it's just, you know, something that you can get so, mm -hmm. so into. Um, yeah, and um, I was going to say, you know, and you guys listening, I keep trying to remind myself to remember that, but you can't add the shell game, and <laughs> that, that's a good visual, but, you know, it's these little little um, swatches, these little insertion pieces that, um, that I was playing around with, and then also the swatches. So it's about just picking up your needles and, 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 and pulling out your stitch dictionaries and not being afraid to just sort of experiment and see what happens, and, you know, that's, that's really what we've been talking about today. So... Um, and, um, and actually, the, the, if you do see the other photo, if you see a photo I had pinned out when I was designing the, this initially, uh, three different swatches that are not used in the final sampler, um, I don't have those swatches anymore. I ripped out and reused that yarn for something else, and so they're gone. I have a photo record of that, and I'm really missing them right now, but the point is Ultimately, if you decide you don't want to keep the swatch after you're done with it, you can rip it out. You can mm -hmm. reuse the yarn. That's the beauty of yarn, unlike fabric. Um, we can rip it out and reuse it. So. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? You can actually um, wash it because uh, you know like you have the kink sometimes just from one gauge swatch even if you haven't blocked it but even if you have blocked it you can actually unblock it is that is that technically a term yeah. <laughs> or a thing that you can do yeah so you can wet it wash it whatever and then you know you can put it around um i know i've used wire hangers but you can actually kind of wrap it around a wire hanger oh, that's and cool. let it dry yeah, I, haven't, I haven't tried that yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go back to a couple uh, th questions, comments. So Marie is using Katia yarn, which is 50% wool. It is a grayish blue. I think that should be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's 50%. Um, it's, you know, somewhat similar, I guess, you could say to a superwash in that sense. And, um, and then we have Tammy, who uh, she had to choose another yarn in a neutral beige. Oh, so you, in the, but you're using, are you using the Deluxe Worsted Superwash? Tammy, I guess that's you. You are, but you're using a different color because maybe you, you couldn't get the one you wanted. Okay. It anyway, go with everything. Yeah, they're beautiful colors, by the way. They have a huge uh, array of colors. So let's see, Marie. I turned Marie into a swatch lover. She says, "Well, that's great." You know, you because yeah, and I. It's funny. Uh, I just want to circle back real quick to the poll. And one of my questions about the situation workshop was, did you guys find this too, you know, basic? Or was it too hard? You know, like those are the questions, right? But now, based on what we're talking about, it's like, well, is that, uh, is that really, was that really the right question to ask? You know what I mean, Beth? Because yeah. uh, it's about sitting, we, as we've been saying this whole time, it's about sitting and spending time with the yarn and seeing what happens on the needles. So it's it's not about whether you're skilled or, or not, you're skilled, you're, you're, you know, you're a more advanced knitter or, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, it was a, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's a learning voyage itself, just the act of picking up yarn and needles. I mean, sometimes we do that just because we want to relax. Mm. You know, you just want to knit mindlessly. Right. Um, yeah. But, but the very act of even just doing that, you mm -hmm. learn mm -hmm. a lot. You will advance your skill. Absolutely. You know, and then it goes into the more the levels of like now, how do we turn that into a design and how do we work the numbers? And then and that's really what we've been talking about here, too. So I'm going to talk about uh, 
I'm going to go into what I what I demonstrated last week because last week I, in my video I did this little diagram or I drew it, it with a sharpie and so I'm going to show you a copy a copy of a copy so um, I guess I should probably uh, flip it around but it's to, to see my writing but before I I'm holding it low so you can't see it but you can just see the stitch pattern and the stitch patterns here one of them is the Madeira lace so flanking on either side of this insertion that I that I found. Is that a photograph of your swatch? No, it's it's actually from a stitch dictionary and it's a copy. But I have my swatch, so I'll show you. It's in black and white, so it almost looks like it could be my swatch, right? But it's very close because actually, um, this is a like I said from a stitch dictionary. This is from the magazine, believe it or not. And in my swatch, I have. In my pattern, I have a knit stitch in, on either side, so you would knit every row, create a knit stitch on every row to create that little border, and then on either side of this, I have three stitches, so you knit three to begin, and then you end with knit three. So I probably should flip it, flip it around, um, and Beth, I'm sorry, I'm going to cover you, but <laughs> so here it is. So here, here, here you, can you guys see this? I hope you guys can see it. So this is something that you could always use, uh, you know, later on if you do decide to customize a little bit. So uh, I made this copy for my own use, for my own use. And as you can see, so the first three stitches, the border stitches, I start with a, with three, then 16 stitches of the Madeira, then eight stitches of a lattice uh, stitch. Uh, I'm sorry, knit one, then the eight stitches, then another knit one and then Madeira, and then the three stitches on the end. So those three border stitches on either side, the knit ones in the center are every row, wrong, right side, doesn't matter. So you always get that edge. And then I have my, um, all my information on the bottom so I can remember. And then my total cast on stitches was 48. So now I'm gonna show you my swatch. So here is my swatch. I'm gonna flip you guys around. So here is the swatch of that very, let me get my my markers out of the way. Can you guys see that? So the first swatch is the Madeira. Probably would be better to to put it down on the table. What do you think? Should I try that? Yeah. Yeah. That'd let me do that. Because sure everybody would love that. Yeah. I, I, like I, those I'm gonna do that, you guys. I usually don't like to do too much movement, but you know what? I like. I, I think you guys should really get a chance to see this. I'm going to do that. Okay, so here it is. So this is the Madeira, the first half of that. And then there is my little center lace a lattice, I guess, a lattice insertion. And then the other side is the Madeira. So it almost does this like zigzag, right? Because you guys saw that. See how it makes this zigzag? That's what it's going to look like. That's what it's going to look like in the uh, kind of the final, the final result of this of this particular piece. And then again, here are all my little my little insertions. And I always like to have the little sticky multiple stickies if I need to because um, so this is my insertion uh, countdown. <laughs> this is how many how many rows I did, and then my Madeira and how many rows I did. And I and I have my little cast on up here, so I could just make sure I kept that kept track of that. So. Um, and yeah, I did some other other swatches as well, as I showed you before, so I don't have to to uh, to show those again. So you guys, I think um, anything else, Beth, that we wanted to talk about before we jump in, because like I said, this is our little commentary before the actual knit along. Anything else that we want to talk about? Does anyone else? Did anyone have any struggles? Any questions about yeah. patterns, multiples, yarn? We already talked about yarn substitution. What, what do you? What else, Beth? Anything that's coming to mind? Uh -huh. There was a question on the other, uh, last week, about casting on and binding off and blocking, and, and really, um, casting on and, and binding off, you want to just make sure that they're very loose, because lace patterns, in general, expand horizontally, um, so it's just something to be aware of. I usually put my finger uh, in between, I cast on a stitch, and then I put my finger, and then I get cast, you know, hold it in place so that the distance between the two stitches doesn't expand or contract too much. And then I make the next one and put my mm -hmm. finger 
and uh, it's just a little technique here. Huh, well, that's interesting. Sure. It's just a way to, to kind of keep the spacing uh, roughly the same and, and space it out, um, and then binding off kind of the same idea, always sort of pushing things on the right-hand needle over as you work so that things don't end up constrained and smooshed mm -hmm. uh, or smushed. Really. And then uh, the other thing I was going to say was about blocking. Um, I think we, I touched on it briefly uh, that, you, that you should really block everything. And, and this is another thing, particularly true of lace. You can't really see what the character of the yarn and the fabric is until you block it. Um, so it, with my swatches, I don't know what you do, Kara. I mean, some of this, as we know, depends on the fiber content. Um, we're working with 100% wool in the deluxe worsted superwash, um, so there's no issues of, of getting it near a steam iron and having it melt, for mm. example. I had that happen to something. Oops. Um, oh, yeah. What about shrinkage? About Have you heard of that? In? Yeah. Uh, with brushing, yeah, you would definitely need to consider that with certain fibers that are more apt to pull in. The beauty of, of wool uh, is that it's springy. I mean, we've already commented, both of us, on the mm -hmm. bouncy oh, yeah. nature of this yarn. Um, but really, uh, I'm not really sure that with this lace pattern, you're not as likely to see pull-in as expansion. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you want it to expand with lace. You want your fabric to expand with lace to show off all the holes. I mean, you spend all the time making the yarn overs and the, working the decreases, and you want to really show off the patterning mm -hmm. uh, that that the decreases and increases create. Yeah. So block, a, block your swatch, and you'll just get this great idea of what the overall pattern is going to be, as well as seeing how many inches the stitches mm -hmm. take up. Yeah, I mean, you definitely have to. You, you just can't get a good picture if you're not going to block. And um, the other even thing is... You only steam block. Excuse me? Take quick, even yeah. if you just give it a quick steam block to see how it is, and that's what I do. That's what I do, Beth. I, I'm a steam blocker. I'm not a wet blocker. I'm just saying. Um, that's just me. I will never wet block. Um, there. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> own it, Wade. Own it. But, but, but I wanted to, before I forget, okay, so yarn overs are easy to, to miss. Because you guys, that's something we didn't talk about. Um, even the most expert knitters miss a yarn over. Drop it whatever because you know even when you're looking at a chart I just did this morning I was like oh that's something we should talk about and visually it's kind of like I knit a wrong side row and so I was like I had 15 stitches instead of 16 on the Madeira lace and so I backed out my purl stitches and I flipped it around to the right side to look to see and I could find exactly where I was missing yarn over because that if you are missing I'm just putting this out there if you're missing a stitch that's usually why you forgot to add a yarn over Sometimes you drop a yarn over, but yeah. I don't. I don't know. Uh, with this yarn and pattern, uh, generally, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess you could. You know, I've dropped them, but I think more or less, my problem is I missed the yarn over in the last in the in the tail end of the repeat, or maybe at the beginning. You know, when you repeat from star, but you then forget when you repeat from star, you have to do another yarn over. So Beth, Beth has something. I'm gonna flip it. Flip well, ya. Flip no, ya. It's just the same thing. <laughs> More apt to forget one, but then sometimes with with these repeats, um, the way they end, like you get in a rhythm of you know yarn over, slip one knit two together, pass slip mm -hmm. stitch over, yarn over, and then at the end of the pattern to to make the stitch count the same, they'll have a single decrease rather than the double, and then I'll end up with uh, with an extra yarn over in there mm -hmm. somehow. I I just kept going with the yarn overs yeah. and added an extra one after the that decrease, mm -hmm. so. Um, what do you do? I mean, I, I generally, I get to be a little lazy, and because I know fabric at this point, I've made a lot of mistakes, and I, I've learned from them. I just sort of reach down and oh, yeah. <laughs> take the yarn up from that, the previous row. That's what I did. I was just going to say, because I thought, ooh, when I did it this morning, I thought, this is, uh, okay, this gets into like a whole conversation about what's right and wrong in knitting, and you know what? And I've said this with Tabitha Hedrick on previous episodes. There's no right or wrong, because... You know, it's your knitting, and don't ever, uh, you know, if you do have a mistake, you're the only one that's probably going to see it, you know, so don't point it out later, and it's probably very, <laughs> it's probably very, 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 you know, minimal, right? It's like not, not a big deal, um, but yeah, so for this problem that I had, the issue that I had, I just, I backed out the, um, 
I started on the right side row. I realized I was missing a stitch. Like, hmm, why isn't this working? And then I counted. I backed out just halfway. And then I just noticed where, oh, there it was. And it was the end of the row. I needed another yarn over. I just picked up a, a thread or a loop or whatever we want to call it, put it on the needle. I made my own yarn over. Okay? You can do that. <laughs> Drop it off the needle. I know that sounds scary. Oh, that too. Yep, yep, absolutely. That's another one. Thanks for that, Beth. Absolutely. And then I'm down to, I should really go get things yeah. ready so, there. Yeah, so, yeah, and, um, yeah, that's great. Thank you for joining me, Beth. I'm going to answer a few more questions. You guys, don't leave. Sure. Don't leave. So, Beth, because no, no, um, you guys are going to see Beth. Leave. Yeah, you guys are going to uh, see Beth in a little bit. So, Beth, um, you know, thanks so much for joining me for Power Pearls uh, Unplugged, and I'll see you, I guess it's going to be maybe in 20-ish minutes or so. 20-ish <laughs> minutes, absolutely. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for inviting me, Kara. We always have the best conversations. Absolutely. Uh, thanks to everybody. I hope I see you over on that Creative Knitting Magazine uh, Facebook page. All right, awesome. Okay, Beth. Okay. See ya. Bye -bye. All right, you guys. So, um, so Marie, you have a question. Where can we post about the knit along? Uh, you can post on the Creative Knitting Facebook page, and you're used to doing that, Marie, from being present for my uh, editor wants to know videos on Wednesday. So, if you go to Creative Knitting Magazine Facebook, that's where. And then, when you go to the video section, you should see a playlist. I hope there's a playlist created. There should be. If not. Uh, it's the last video. It's last week, last Friday, Friday the 3rd. Friday, February 3rd is there. And Elisa, don't go. Okay. <laughs> you can go, Elisa. It's fine. Um, because I know you had another question, Elisa. I'm going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. So, uh, are mainly all yarns superwash? And the answer is no. No. Um, there's a process. There's a process that is uh, that 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 is done for a yarn that's a wool that's a superwash and basically it's a wool that's washed and washed and washed over and over and over, which is what how it got the name how it gets the name superwash because it's washed super duper amounts of times. <laughs> and again, I make up these words as I go. I know that's correct not correct grammar, but it sounds good. Um, and so basically, I believe that it takes out the lan lanolin and other properties that um, enable you to actually take the yarn and put it in the washing machine, put it in the washing machine. So you'll get 100% wool, you get wool that's 50% wool like uh, uh, Marie is using for her project. And uh, also, I think it's at least 70 or 80% uh, wool content is needed if you want to felt. So that's going into another conversation. But if you want to felt a project, then you need you need to have a, a, you know a certain amount of wool in uh, wool content um, compared to other fibers is is really what I wanted to say. But a super wash wool will not felt, okay? Because it is super wash. It's it has the, it's been washed so that you can put it in the washing machine. But I do recommend don't wash it on hot and and. I, I never wash my hand knits, even if I make it in a super wash yarn. But you can, you can. So I hope that answers your question. And so, um, all right, you guys. Oh, good, Elisa, you didn't go away. So we're gonna wrap it up. So uh, you guys, this has been great, and I'm uh, and I'm really glad that uh, that I was able to jump on today because my 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 son is sick, my poor little guy. Hi, Shirley. Shirley from Muncie, trying to watch from Applebee's. You're in Muncie. I did not know that. I should know that, Shirley. I should know that, right? Because you've been hanging on here forever. I'm in Indiana, too, so we're not that far. We're neighbors. I cannot believe it. So have you guys been loving this knit along? I really hope so. Um, thank you. Thank you for all of you that are my supporters on Patreon. I feel like it's such a gift to have you guys there because the fact that you're supporting the podcast helps me to continue to do things like this you know, the indirect things aside from the podcast, but it also helps me to be able to do it more and more of it, uh, you know, and have the time to create more products like the Stitchucation workshop and all these other things. So if anyone watching is interested in Patreon is in, you know, learning about how to sponsor uh, or support, let's just say support because it's different than a typical sponsorship. But if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Power Pearls Podcast. And that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N 
dot com forward slash power pearls podcast and I'll, it'll be in the show notes or in the you know the video notes um, later on but that's it and you guys share please share this video so we can you know just really have a lot of fun you know with other people that have questions and anyone that might take the knit along at a later time because the knit along they don't go away the knit alongs don't go away so if you're going to jump on creative knitting in just a little while just be um, you know can be sure that the, the knit along will remain in the future so you can go back and you can listen listen at your leisure you can rewatch and uh, and post your photos like Beth was saying make sure that you go in there and you post your progress photos please be sure to do that so with that I think I'm going to sign off and happy weekend and you know I'll see you on the podcast I'll see you on patreon I'll see you on Facebook so you guys have a good one all right I'll see you next time